I'm finally going to do another rock video. So here we go. I haven't done one in a long time because I used to do like the the worst, the best, like a million other people on YouTube. I go through the whole discographies of the bands. I went through every band I cared about. Uh, I tried to get into other bands, listen to them from beginning to end. I couldn't make it through Jefferson Starship. I really only like the Mickey Thomas years. Uh, yes, I only like the 70s stuff, some of the 80s stuff, everything from like the 90s on I couldn't get through. Uh, so I still want to come back do some rock album stuff. So I'm going to go through probably my favorite band to collect, Deep Purple. I got a big stack of their live albums. That's why they're my favorite to collect because you got so many of them. They're my third favorite band behind Queen, which I did a whole video on all their live albums. Uh, they only got about 10, and they're all official. Uh, Pink Floyd's got less than that. They probably only got, like, what, five, six live albums that are all, all official. The rest of the, everything else is bootlegs. Deep Purple, you got original releases. You got uh, unofficial releases. You got just, like... People putting stuff out from radio programs, stuff like that. Re-releases with... There's a lot to collect here. Every time I'm in a music store, the first thing I always look go through when I don't have like a plan of what I'm going to buy, it's always Deep Purple, see what live albums they got. I think I got about 20 of them here. So let's kind of dig in. Um, basically, if you only listen to Made in Japan, you say, oh, that's, that's their best live album ever. It's like... Okay, whatever. There's a whole lot more to listen to. That was only the first time they played, the first tour they played uh, all the big classics and stuff like Smoke on the Water and Space Trucking and stuff like that. Playing in Japan, you don't get like crowd cheering and going crazy like that because they don't do that there. They're not singing along. It's kind of a dead crowd. Yeah, it's a good album. I just think there's a lot better, more interesting stuff about it, so... Let's get that out of the way. I'm not talking crap about the album. I just think there's more interesting stuff out there. And let's get into just the top of the pile. Live in Stuttgart. Uh, this is what I'm talking about with re reissues and things. Uh, there's another version of this. This is from the Battle Rages on tour. And there was another one come Hell or High Water. It was also it was like a, a VHS tape that came out in the early 90s. And that was made up of two shows, Stuttgart and I think, I forgot, Birmingham, something like that. And this is the full Stuttgart show, and then the other one, Ian Gillen didn't want, he wanted that one deleted, because he, he really hated that one, and Richie Blackmore, uh, he doesn't even show up through Highway Star, and there's lots of mistakes on it. I don't care, I listened to the whole show of that too, I listened to that one on YouTube. I liked it. I like all the weird stuff that's going on. There's, when a concert tells a story like that, and Blackmore is being pissy backstage, and with the other bands got a cover for him not even come showing up to play the solo, I like that stuff. This one, Ian Gillen forgets the words to... I think he forgot... He, in Hush, he forgot, and... Well, other bits here and there. I find that interesting. I like the screw-ups. I heard the songs played great before. I want to hear them... I want to hear renditions of weird stuff going on. So the, the concert tells more of a story, like them hating each other and Blackmore wanting to quit a couple weeks later. I'm all for it. Uh, like, nobody's perfect. Here's another victim of re-releases. Um, this is the original release. And they re-released it, remastered with another disc and more songs, which is out of print. So now I got to track one of those down or get like some sort of expensive import. Just get three more songs, 18 more minutes worth of stuff. What you're missing on that is Space Truckin' and uh, Dead or Alive, which kicks total ass live. This is from the House of Blue Light tour and I forgot what the other one. Did you get Hard Love with a Woman on? This is basically... Made in Japan, but with a few extra current stuff where they throw in like Perfect Strangers and stuff. I forgot the other song I was missing. Oh, Bad Attitude. I think it was Bad Attitude. And 
This is another one of those those where they take like a bunch of shows, cut them together from a tour. Um, kind of like not doesn't always make like the best live album. You want to hear more in in song in between song banter? Well, this one does. This one does. I got them going to Jesus Christ Superstar. Did little bits like that. I thought that was unique. I figured maybe they only did that for like this tour or something like that. But no, the more the more of these you get, the more the closer together you're getting a lot of the same bits. I thought it was unique. They kind of go through the whole this is basically part of the stage show all the way up through almost this. 92. No, or 93. I forgot. 93 ish. Whatever. But I like this one. Well, they also redo Hush. First time they do Hush since the 60s. When Ian Gillen just joined. And I only have one other. I got one version of that. And that's on. Uh, let's get into that one then. I didn't, I, I didn't like that version of Hush. It's not that good. But. Kind of a, a live album. Kind of new material. This is the them. In concerto for group and orchestra. Here's the more famous looking cover. But this is them doing an original piece of music live, so it's kind of a live album. But they also have on the second disc with the of the re-release, you get a hush, you get them doing Ring Net Neck and uh, Child in Time. That's the good stuff. The rest of the stuff I never really cared for the the whole symphony thing. It's it's got some good bits in it, but overall it's just like kind of long and boring and kind of meanders. You figure something like this would be cooler, but it's not. In theory, theory, it's a cool idea. And they re re revisit it later on. We'll get to that later on. Um, let me. Where is my Made in Japan? Where'd I put it? Where'd I put it? Made in Japan, made in Japan, made in Japan. Made in Japan. I got the regular release. Of course, they re-released this too. They re-released this again with like all three shows they take they took from this with encores and stuff like that. That was a big box set. And they also have a, a re-release this, I think, with a double disc with some encores. I just got the right original regular one. And yeah, it's good. This is basically the template for their live shows from now till from then till now, um, but I'm missing the encores. Except I got this little budget one. Uh, look, it's not even like a real photo. That's not Blackmore at all. That's just some generic picture of a guy playing a Strat or Les Paul. I think I got the missing songs on here. I have uh, Lucille on there. I think that's from. I don't know because I didn't look, I didn't delve too deeply in this, but this is just a bunch of kind of like a best of whatever this little record company had putting this out, whatever they can get their hands on, a bunch of live stuff. They threw it on here. Can't quite identify where the rest of these is. Probably uh, made in Europe and stuff like that. Oh, oh, it's also got one of my other favorite ones. We'll get into this disc. This is the other time they did. Uh, the big symphony and this was a this is probably one of my favorite live albums by then this is a, like a re-release this is some budget one from recall i got a bunch of stuff from recall i got uh judas priests um sad wings of destiny and rock and roll put together in one they changed the name of it there uh but this has live at montro which is 1996 the steve morse Kind of a short set list on here. I don't know if it's the full show. They just played a short uh, set for uh, like that festival that they played. But I liked that tour. It was the first time I got to see them live. I saw them on uh, um, Perpendicular. And it's got... They bring back some old stuff. Like they never played much of this. Like Fireball... Ted the Mechanic, which is sadly missing from their sets nowadays. Pictures of Home, which I don't remember them playing at all on any of the old stuff. It was not on this. This is the first time they started playing this on this tour. Um, Black Knight, that was always in the set. Woman from Tokyo, no one came, but I don't remember that on any of the earlier stuff. 
when a blind man cries. Now, with Steve Morse, it finally made it into the set. I don't really like that song. They keep trying to... They, they made it into a thing. It was a B-side. I don't care. Hey, Cisco. I wish they played that more. Speed King, Smoke on the Water. But going back to the, the, the symphony one, I think it's from 1999, 30th anniversary of it. This is missing a song, but I have that on here. And it's Dio singing Smoke on the Water with the band. Which might be one of my favorite versions of Smoke on the Water. It's him... Sing Dio sing with Deep Purple with an orchestra going behind them, because this one where they play with the London Symphony Orchestra, they played a lot of their solo songs. Um, Ian Gillen had a couple of solo songs he played. He played the one with the uh, song, the stuff for me did with the Roger Waters or not Roger Roger Glover album, uh, the Vacation one. I don't know. I'll put it in the bottom. And John Lord, he did a couple of his stuff. Pictured Within is really good. It's got the, the background singers from Pink Floyd. The girl, Sam Brown. She's really good. Wait a while. That was, that'll bring tears to your eyes. It's not, it's not Deep Purple stuff. But I like the stuff they were, they were playing, their solo stuff. Then you get to think, well, what does Ian Pace do for his little solo spot? He did uh, Ring That Neck, but he did like a real jazzy version with the... The symphony, I really like that. Here's another one. Kind of a victim of re-releases. I'm missing one song. Here's Live at the California Jam. I forgot what song they're missing, but I know I'm missing one. And this is probably the best concert you're going to get from the Burn era. Burn and Smoke Stormbringer era, I think. This is it's it was more of a visual thing. Is this the one where the concert where Richie Blackmore uh, blows up his amplifiers and beats the, the the camera over? I'm talking to you like you know all deep purple, like you're a hardcore fan. You're probably not watching this video unless you're a hardcore fan. And he beats the the camera with his guitar and throws it out in the audience and stuff like that. So they're doing that through space trucking, which really isn't space trucking. Space trucking is only like the first two minutes of the song. And then they do this big long jam. It's really the Mandrake route. Um, then they're going around causing chaos. Everybody's doing their thing. And then they go back into like some space trekking at the very end. But that's what I'm talking about. I like albums that tell a story. Is then we got Made in Europe. It's kind of the sequel to Made in Japan. But they didn't want to repeat what songs that they played, even though this. The, the David Coverdale and Glenn Hughes lineup still played, you know, Smoke on the Water and Lazy, stuff like that. Did they play Lazy this tour? I don't remember. But they would they did play it in, like, High White Star, but they didn't do that. That's what 70s albums typically did, Kiss Alive and Live 2. They didn't want to double up, get in the same songs twice. Although it would have been cool because it's a different lineup. But this one's, like, an edited-up show. This one's got, like, you know... Crowd noises added in, stuff like that. There's the the actual shows that this was taken from, or that made for this, like live in Graz, live in Paris. There might have been another one. I listened to I think the Graz show, and it's basically the first half of this concert. This this CD, it's good. I like it, but it's incomplete. Um, the Purple in Concert 72. This is also a re-release of Deep Purple in Concert 70, 72. This is the full show. And it's the first time they ever played any of the Machine Head stuff live. I kind of prefer this one if I'm going to that era of, uh... Made in Japan stuff. This is the freshest you're ever going to hear of Smoke on the Water. It's the first time they played it live. And I can't think of anything else to say. I don't know what the, the 1970 show is. I don't, I don't know if that ever got re-released into something else. But it's also kind of a dead audience because 
Yeah, they cheer, and there's a little in between. You can go and have some banter with the audience and stuff like that. But there's not there's not like they're cheering and going crazy. It's a small audience. I think it was taped for BBC, something like that. Seen a lot of these turn up. They just put out like these in like these blank cases, and it's just some. Random show in Newcastle, Australia, and the only thing, this is around what? This is 2001, and they got guest appearance by some guy, Jimmy Barnes, and I don't know who that is. I should probably know who that is, some Australian rock star. Uh, it's got Ted Mechanic again, and mostly, most of the, you know, the same songs they've been playing from the 90s, that they don't... Sadly, don't play no more. Sometimes I feel like Screaming's still on there. Fools is still on there. A Cisco's still on there. So this is a decent, decent uh, set list. I like to try and vary up the set list. Try to get something from at least every tour. My favorite tour, which I wish had an official album, uh, was, uh, uh, why am I blanking? Slaves and Masters. If you ever hear any bootlegs from Slaves and Masters, it's insane. Because you get to hear some, not a lot, we hear some of the like, like Coverdale year stuff. Like they do Burn, and then they do, of course, the Gillen stuff, but then they do like King of Dreams, which was never played again. Love Conquers All, never played again. Great stuff. Uh, ooh, I'll do these two together. Another live at Montrose. This is, what, 2006? This is from the Rapture of the Deep Tour. And this is probably the worst live album by them I have. Ian Gillen's voice was not in top form for this one. Um, does got one really good song. I, I went back and had to check this. I, Rapture of the Deep isn't one of my favorite albums, even though I love the title song. There's a song on here called Things I Never Said. I, like, I like this song. How come I don't remember this from the album? Maybe I didn't dip, uh, uh, dig too deep when I listened to that album, but I, I've heard every Deep Purple album like a thousand times. Because it was only on the uh, the re-release tour edition. It was a bonus track, and they're playing it here. This, Of course, I downloaded it later, legally, whatever. Who cares? Gotta have it. I ain't rebuying the album again. But it's on here and it sounds pretty damn good. And that's all the rest of this is, I, don't know, I thought it was kind of a weak performance. And Beat Purple put out, I think, two live albums. One was called Live in the Rising Sun or Setting Sun. And one was Live and Walking. And this is kind of like a mashup between the two of them. They put out a budget version in Walmart. I got them here. This is just, just the hits. Just the big songs. Highway Star. Strange Kind of Woman, Perfect Strangers, Space Truckins, Black Knight, all that stuff. They just took the big classic songs. They didn't have the, you know, stuff off of uh, Now What, stuff like that. Um, this was out when I first started trying to get into Deep Purple. Thank God I did not buy this album then or I probably never would have listened to Deep Purple afterwards and now it would have become a fan this is for the hardcore listeners only uh live and rare i always thought this cover was cool looking look at it. look how colorful it is it's got a cool picture of them on the back um this came out probably 92 i would like to say when i was getting into these guys when i was about 15 um it also goes under the name scandinavian knights and i think another title or two um, this, from 1970 tour, they jam on real long, like, I think Ring Neck Neck is good 25, 30 minutes, uh, Mandrake Root jams on for about 30 minutes, and it's not even, like, jamming, it's just them, like, noodling around for, like, 15 minutes, and John Lord going, making sound effects with his, his organ, as a long-time fan, I find that fascinating, but as a new beginner listener, 
this would have been irritating as hell. Would not have gotten into it. But now I I love hearing this. This is also out of order. It was like, why would they start with like a 30 minute ring that neck? I forgot what they really do. I think they probably started off with Speed King. Um, here is my probably my favorite of all. All right, it's the Tommy Bolin era stuff. Um, also re-released. This is a re-release of live in Japan or last concert. No, last concert in Japan. I got this one this time around. This is the full show, except for I forgot they had to add in one song from another show just to complete the concert because they didn't have tape of it. And this is pretty terrible. They are drunk. Coverdale is drunk. Tommy Bolin infamously like shot up his arm and it was dead. And John Lord's taking almost all the solos on there. Glenn Hughes is high as a kite. But I like hearing, I, I love concerts that go wrong. Because it's more interesting when hearing how human they are. I want to hear mistakes and stuff. I want to hear how bad things get. And this is this album is kind of embarrassing for them, but it is absolutely the most fascinating thing I listen to, and I love it. But if you want to hear them actually play good, here's another live album of theirs. This is mostly uh, I forgot what it was called, it was King Biscuit Flower Hour, or also live on the wings of a Russian fox bat. I got it as extended editions and even doubles up the songs because they had to tape it twice. Uh, the version of Georgia on my mind by Glenn Hughes is he's high as a kite on that one too. He was not going, he was, he was not having a good time. Well, I saw him about three years ago in Providence and he was awesome. And he's maybe my third favorite purple member. I don't even know. Maybe fourth. As you would say, oh, it's like, yeah, we could go Blackmore, you go John Lord. It was like, should it be Ian Gillen? Um, more into drums, Ian Pace, but it's like, no, Glenn Hughes plays bass pretty damn mean. I'm gonna say he's a better bass player than Roger Glover, and he sings, but Ian Gillen's the man. I don't know, but this is pretty, this is a better, them, them getting their stuff together for at least the, on Burn and Highway Star and all that, this, no, but if you want to hear John Lord picking up, you know, the slack for everybody else and tells an interesting story live. And I'm throwing this one in as a bonus too. This is a rainbow one. This is rainbow from, uh, I think the Difficult to Cure tour. And why would I throw that in there? Because Roger Glover's on here and Jolyn Turner's on here. And I think Don Airy's on here. Everybody here is a Deep Purple member, except for the drummer, which I think was Bobby Rondinelli on this. Bobby Rondinelli's on this. Um, but it's interesting. Oh, I'm missing one of them. I know I have another one. I'm going to run upstairs and get that one next. Uh, I read... Wait, hold on. It's relevant. All right, I went upstairs and got it. It was... This is the Perfect Strangers tour. Perfect Strangers live. It was the beginning of this. Is, they're in Australia. This is the very beginning of the tour, and I think in the liner notes of this, they they say they had to when they were rehearsing for the tour, they sent a roadie out to go get the records so they can re-listen to it and relearn the songs. Because yeah, they were playing them, and you know. Pace and Lord were still playing some stuff, and White Snake and Blackmore and Glover were playing some stuff, and uh, and Rainbow. But if you listen to them playing this in Rainbow, they they obviously forgot how the song actually sounded on the record. If you smoke on the water, they're playing like way way too fast. And I think they did a little bit of lazy on here, it sounded like speed metal. They lost the script there, and they got it back together on here. And said on my other Deep Purple video where I did the discography, I kept mentioning Rainbow. I think in the Rainbow one I mentioned that, the Deep Purple. Follow, like, the, the progression of the music from, like, Stormbringer. You're following the musical direction. Blackmore 
that sound follows into like the first Rainbow albums and swings back to Perfect Strangers. The last Rainbow album, before getting back with everybody else, progresses into Perfect Strangers and live. Live wise, playing the, the music, they they did they obviously they forgot how to play the songs live, like the sounding like them because it, it was played way too quick. This basically, I think they're who's the drummer on this? Bobby Rondinelli. They probably was like, all right, uh, let's go into what is it? Smoke on the water. He probably didn't listen to the records. All right, I'll just play it. Play it too quick. That's where they went on that. This is good. That's all my deep purple stuff. So if you're just diving in, just listening to like, you know, Made in Japan, like, yeah, it's cool. It's a good album, but there's so much more to listen to. There's so much more. I, I'll listen to any deep purple album. I don't care. Then there's my bootlegs I got from the shows I went to. Uh, I, I recorded them on my phone and I listened to them. I always got a deep purple live on my phone or in my car somewhere. Just, uh, it's it's fun for me to sit down and analyze all the different shows. That's when you know you really love a band when you you can say, all right, I got to hear, you know, the 30th different version of Smoke on the Water. Or I got to hear uh, Dead or Alive from the one tour they actually played that. And I got to go spend $30 on an album for just two more extra songs. So fun to collect, fun to collect. Here's a bonus one. I forgot. I got one DVD. Perihelion. This is from early 2000s. And I was a little disappointed with this one. I thought... I didn't like the... It was filmed on video. And I thought it was going to be like some really cool looking thing on on film. But it wasn't. Good set list. Early 2000s stuff. Songs they don't play no more. Like Ted the Mechanic again. Quit making something out of Mary Long. I did not like that song. Or no one came to okay. This one also came with a DVD. I never really watch. I never watch the DVDs that come with these things. Like live DVDs. I always hope there's some day where I'm just going to sit down and just watch like the whole concert stuff. I never have time for that. But when I'm listening to a concert, I'm listening to it in the car or out on a walk. I never have time to. If I'm going to sit down and watch, I'm probably going to watch a movie. I'm probably not going to watch a concert. I wish I did. I wish I had that attention span at the moment, but I don't in the, the time. All right, there's an honorable mention. I don't have a physical copy of it. It was the one live show that they actually had of the first lineup. It was them opening for Cream, and it's got them with Rod Evans and Nick Semper. That's a great album. If all right, if I'm doing a top five, that's in the top five. So let's do a top five. Top five of these. I, I think I have the five best. The ones there's probably fifteen other live albums I don't have by that. But I know that one's making top five. So let's do top five. All right, I'm doing number five is gonna be I think it's Live in Inglewood. I think is the name of that album. That's gonna be number five with the Mark One lineup. This is a controversial pick for number four. I'm going this time around. The infamous full concert of Last Concert in Japan because this is fascinating to listen to because there's some there's a lot wrong with this. Um, I'm going with number three. I'm going with The Perfect Strangers Live. I think this is superior to Made in Japan. You're getting all the same damn songs on it anyway. Uh, updated, modern, people singing along this time. You got a pretty raucous crowd. You got a longer set list. You got more songs. That's why I'm going with that. This is for Mark II. I think out of all this stuff, this is probably what the best you're going to get. Um, unless you're going for the early, early 70s stuff where they do like 40-minute jams. No. Uh, number, where are we at? All right, number three. No, we're at number two now. We're at number two. I'm going in concert with the London Symphony Orchestra, even though I don't have the full version of it. Um, I stream it a lot. Uh, 
I don't even really love the In Concerto part, but I like all the other songs on this. I like all the weird so side songs. Like, that's why God is singing the blues and the Ring That uh, Neck and Via Miami. Love is All with Dio, where he does this, the song, his big song from uh, Butterfly Ball. That's a great, that's awesome. It's just like everybody there. Steve Morse is killing it later years, but not too, too late. Don Airy's not even on it yet. Still John Lord. And then number one, I'm going California Jam. I'm picking this one for this lineup above the Made in Europe because that's not a full concert. If you can get the full unedited version of this live on California Jam, I'd say go with that. That's most exciting. You got big, long space trucking jam. Everything else is just tight and killer. Boom. That's it. There we go. Yes, I threw Made in Japan off. Whatever. Deal with it. Uh, I will try and do more rock reviews and like, subscribe, comment. Boom. Thank you.